Okay, so for this, we are asked, we've given f of x is x squared plus x plus 1. g of x is x minus 7 over x minus 3. We're asked to first find g of f of x, and then after we've done that, find the domain for g of f of x. Okay, so let's find our function first. Now, g of f means we're going to take f and plug it into g. So we take our function g, which is x minus 7 over x minus 3, and we're going to, going to replace each of these x's with our entire f function. So each of those x's is going to be replaced with x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so let's take a look at what that would look like. We're, we have our x part here. Let me write down my g of f. Our x portion is here, and then on the end it was minus 7. On the top bottom, we have whatever our x value is here, minus 3. Again, we're replacing that x with our entire f function. So instead of x minus 7, we have x squared plus x plus 1, that f function, minus 7. And on the bottom, we have again x squared plus x plus 1 minus the 3. Let's go ahead and simplify that. Um, about all we can do is combine our like terms. So on the top we have a plus 1 minus 7 gives us x squared plus x minus 6. On the bottom our x squared plus x plus 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 gives us a negative 2. So we have x squared plus x minus 2 on the bottom there. All right, so there is our function. That's the first thing we were asked to do, was find g of f of x. So part of our answer is here. The next thing that we're asked to do, however, is to find the domain for that. Um, now the domain depends on two things. It depends on the function you plugged in. So we would have to take into account the function we plugged in, which was f. Now it's all real numbers. It's just a plain polynomial. So that's not going to affect our domain at all. Okay. The second part is what's the domain of the function we created here. Um, and notice it's a fraction. So when we have fractions or rational functions, our domain is all real numbers except for those that make our denominator zero because you cannot have a denominator of zero. So we take the denominator. When we're finding our domain here, we set it equal to zero and we solve. Now if we can factor, that's fantastic. It slows this process up a little bit um, or hurries it up. Are, are there any factors of negative two that add to equal one? And there are uh, positive 2 and negative 1. Um, those are factors of 2, oh, excuse me, negative 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And when we add them, 2 plus negative 1, we get a positive 1 like we did here in the center. We set each factor equal to 0 so that we can finish out here. And we get x is negative 2 and x is positive 1. So what did we find here? These are the two numbers we cannot use for x. The reason we cannot use them for x is because if we put them in the bottom here for x, we would get 0, and we can't have that. So our domain is all real numbers except for negative 2 and 1. When we write that domain, okay, our smaller number is negative 2, our larger number is 1. So we start at negative infinity and go until we get to negative 2. We can use any of those numbers but we can't use negative 2, so we kind of have to cut it out. So we go from negative infinity to negative 2, and then from negative 2, notice these are rounded, so we're not including the negative 2. Go from negative 2 to our next problem spot, which is at 1. We cut out the 1, and from there we can go to infinity. So our domain would be, it's basically all real numbers except for negative 2 and 1, but if you write it in interval notation, this is what it would look like. Negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 1, and then 1 to infinity. So for our function g of f of x, which came out to be x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared plus x minus 2, we end up with this as our domain. <laughs> Yeah.
is composition of functions. This is composition of functions when we're asked to also find the domain of that composition that we end up with. Okay. Now, first, let's find our composition. Um, this gives us the instructions to first find f of g and then find the domain. Again, when you're finding compositions, f of g, you're taking the function f of x and you're replacing all of the x values with the function g of x. f of x is 2 times x minus 1. So where this x is, we're going to replace it with g of x. So we'll have 2 times x squared plus x minus 3 minus 1. Okay, so just plop the entire thing in there everywhere there's an x. And then you want to simplify as much as you can. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2. And I get 2x squared plus 2x minus 6 minus 1. And 2x squared plus 2x minus 7. Now just common mistakes that people, not oft people often make. They'll do the 2 times and forget this minus 1 that was out here in our function. Try not to forget that part. Okay. So here's our answer so far. f of g of x is 2x squared plus 2x minus 7. Now let's do the second part of the problem, which was to find the domain. So as we look at, we need to do two things. We have to consider our final result, 2x squared plus 2x minus 7, and say what would the domain be there. Well, we can put any x value into this function. So there's no fractions and no square roots. There's really, you can put anything you would like into the function, so your domain is going to be all real numbers. We also, however, have to consider what we put into the function. We have to consider the domain of g of x, that value we substituted into f of x, but it is also has a domain of all real numbers. So our domain is going to be all real numbers, or everything from negative infinity to infinity for our domain. So there is our answer. Okay, here is the second example. f of x is 16 minus x squared. g of x is x squared minus 16. Find g of g and then find its domain. So g of g means we take the function x squared minus 16 and replace it with all of the x's with x squared minus 16. So here's our x value for g of x. We replace that with g of x. Okay, so you see how we did that? We just took our x value and substituted in what we were supposed to, the full g of x function. And this is g of g of x. Now, when you're squaring something like this, it's important to remember you're not just squaring each term. Squared means taking something times itself. So x squared minus 16 squared means x squared minus 16 times x squared minus 16, and do not forget that minus 16 that was on the end, he's still part of the problem. So we FOIL this out, and we get x to the fourth minus 16x squared minus 16x squared plus 16 squared, which is 256. Okay, that was just this portion, and then we still have minus 16 on the end. Go ahead and put your terms together to finish this out. We have x to the fourth minus 32x squared, and then we do 256 minus 16, and we get 240. Okay, so we've answered the first part of the problem. g of g of x is x to the fourth minus 32x squared plus 240. Now we're supposed to find the domain of that. So again, look at your final result. What did we have? Is there any restrictions on this domain? There's not. We could put any value of x we want in there. So this would have a domain of all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. When we look up at this one, um, what our function came from, okay, x squared minus 16, its domain is also all real numbers, 
or from negative infinity to infinity. So, our domain is going to be just that. All right, now let's use those same two functions, but let's find f of f instead of g of g. So here's our function f is 16 mi the square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is take f of x and plug it in where our x is. Well, our f of x was the square root of 16 minus x squared. We want to simplify that. So let's go one step at a time. x squared and square roots cancel one another. This square root of x squared is x. So then we have 16 minus 16 minus x squared. Simplify that. Notice we have this negative in front. You want to make sure you distribute that negative to both parts. So we have 16 minus 16 plus x squared, because of this negative times the negative makes that positive. Well, 16 minus 16 is 0, and we're left with the square root of x squared, which is x. But we want to include one more thing there. We only want the positive values, because if we were doing this, we would go one step at a time. We would square the x first. So even if x was negative 2, if we did order of operations, we would square that to get positive 4, and then take the square root. So we're always going to get positive answers here, and we want to make sure when someone can't see where we came from that we still just get the positive answers. So our answer here is going to be the absolute value of x, because remember, absolute value only gives you the positive answers for x. Again, the reason for that is because if we had stayed with our x squared, the square root of that, we would have squared the value first to make it positive, it would always have been positive, and then taken its square root. So our answer for f of f of x, it is the absolute value of x. Okay, so that's the first part of our answer. Now we're supposed to find the domain. So let's look at our result, absolute value of x. We can put any number we want. We'll always get a positive answer out, but for x, we can put anything in there that we want. Now let's look at where we came from. We plugged Six, the square root of 16 minus x squared into that. We have to take into account the domain of this square root of 16 minus x squared. Are there any restrictions when you have a square root? And the answer is yes, there are. We only want real answers, so the number underneath that radical has to be positive. So to find our domain, we take whatever was under the square root. This happens any time you have a square root. And you want that number to be greater than or equal to 0. Because if it's less than 0, we get a negative number, and it's not in our domain. So let's find this domain. And it makes it a little more complicated because it's a squared. So remember, when we do quadratic inequalities, we would factor if we can. Fortunately, this does factor as 4 minus x and 4 plus x. And we find out where it's equal to 0. So we set each of those equal to 0 and find that when x is 4 and x is negative 4, we have zeros. And this hopefully is review. It may have been a tougher part, but <laughs> we put those on the number line and then we test sections of this number line to find out where our inequality, 16 minus x squared, is true and where it is false. Okay? So let's test a number less than negative 4, let's say negative 5. If I put negative 5 into that inequality, I get 16 minus negative 5 squared, which gives me 16 minus 25, which is not greater than 0. It's a negative number, it's negative 9. That's not true, so this is not part of my domain. It made the inequality false. Then I test something in between them, let's say 0. Let's do 0. Um, so 16 minus 0 squared would be 16. Yes, that is greater than, so this is part of my answer. 
I'm guessing this last, last section is going to be false just because that's the way it seems to go. But we'll do it anyways. We need to try anyways. Set something bigger than 4, say 5. So we have 16 minus 5 squared. Is that greater than or equal to 0? And again, we get 16 minus 25, which is negative 9. And negative 9 is not greater than 0. So that is not part of my answer. My answer, or the values that make 16 minus x squared greater than or equal to 0, is everything between negative 4 and 4, including negative 4 and 4. So up here at the top, I'm going to write my domain. My domain are all values from negative 4 to 4, including those numbers. Okay, and I know that's a bit complicated because absolute value of x, we could put anything in we wanted, but we have to also take into consideration where we came from. We came from the function the square root of 16 minus x squared. So we have to honor its domain also. Okay, and for square root to find their domain, you set the quantity underneath greater than or equal to 0, and solve that. Okay, we're going to do two more examples. So hang in there. <laughs> this one's a little bit longer. Um, f of x is 3x plus 4. g of x is this fraction here. We want to find g of f of x. So remember, we're going to take our function g and replace all of the x's with f of x, which is 3x plus 4. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 1. Where we, again, wherever the x was, we're going to put our f function, which was 3x plus 4. And then we simplify that. Um, notice we can combine some like terms there. So we get 3x plus 7 on the top and 3x plus 3 on the bottom. There is our g of f. Now let's find our domain. Now there are restrictions on fractions when it comes to domain. Remember, anything that makes the denominator equal 0 is undefined. So to find our domain here, we are going to take the denominator and set it equal to 0. Okay, And anything that makes that denominator 0 is not part of our domain. We solve that, we get that x is negative 1, makes the denominator 0. So our domain for this part is anything except for negative 1. We also have to consider where we came from. We came from plugging f of x into that. So if we look at the function f of x, it's 3x plus 4. We could put anything into that, so there's no restrictions there. So our only restriction is that it can't be equal to negative 1. So our domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from negative 1 to infinity. That just kind of cuts negative 1 out. So there you have it.